Genetic counselors are health professionals who are specially trained in medical genetics and how to deliver complicated information in an easy to digest fashion. We like to say that we translate the medical into English for the standard patient. Pre-test genetic counseling in Fabry disease is important because it helps set expectations for physicians and patients in understanding what the results might come back as. When you go through sequencing of a gene such as GLA gene, and then you're also looking for large and extra pieces that are missing or added, then you need to think about what type of gene changes could be found. The answers you could get would be nothing. If you get a negative result on a genetic testing for Fabry disease, there are still some rare instances when someone has Fabry disease and has a negative genetic test. However, that becomes a complicated matter with additional tests that it's often the best idea that if a woman has symptoms and there's a, there is not a known gene change causing Fabry disease in the family, then that might be a point to refer over to genetics. If an individual finds a pathogenic variant or mutation in the GLA gene that causes Fabry disease, that means that we need to think about who else might be at risk in the family. And then we need to evaluate the patient, looking at objective and subjective findings to see where they are in their path of Fabry disease. Fabry disease is a progressive disease. You can't just look at a patient after diagnosis and say, oh, your baseline is fine. You don't have symptoms. We're not worried about Fabry disease for you. In the case of a woman who does have that gene variant, you'll need to check them at baseline and then repeated intervals over the course of their life to see when treatment should be started and how we need to focus on different organ systems. If there is no gene mutation found, uh, then that most likely means the individual doesn't have Fabry disease. But if they still have symptoms, it's worth exploring more. And the best way to explore more is to refer over to genetics so they can do some of the more esoteric tests that are not easily accessible. If an individual gets a diagnosis of a gene change in the GLA gene that is of unknown significance or a variant of unknown significance or possibly pathogenic, that's when there needs to be some detective work in the family on the gene mutation itself and different ways that we need to look at the individual to see if there might be another cause for Fabry disease. A variant of uncertain significance tells us we don't know if this gene change could cause problems or not cause problems. And then we, the, the easiest way to determine if a variant of uncertain significance leads to Fabry disease in a particular family is to look for a male who has it. Because as we mentioned, men are more straightforward when it comes to Fabry disease with consistency of symptoms, consistency of biomarkers. So if there's a variant of uncertain significance in a family and you find a male family member who has that gene change, that can give you a better answer to whether or not your woman is at increased risk for having Fabry disease. When we think about genetic counseling after genetic testing, we think about next steps. How do we identify other family members who might be at risk? How do we need to think about developing a treatment plan for the individual woman to figure out best how disease is progressing in her and if we should start treatment right now or if it's something that could be delayed a year to watch disease progression? And then we also need to think about the reoccurrence risk. 